Hello lovely people, welcome to part one of my April reading wrap up. Sophie vlogs. I am feeling extremely full of hay fever today, so I'm going to do my best and keep everything going. I really thought that my April reading tanked, and I think now I come to sit down with all of my books, maybe that is a lie. <laughs> I'm going to start with my fiction and then do some poetry and then end on some non-fiction. So um, for fiction I read The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. I really enjoyed this. This is quite a bleak sci-fi. We're set in this world where corporations very much like rule, like you as a citizen belong to whatever corporation like sort of owns where you live. And Earth is at war against Mars. And Earth has this technology that breaks people down into life and that's how they can use, that's how they deploy troops. And character Deets signs up in the wake of this um, awful event that happens that sort of like spurs her on to join the army. We follow her through her training and then once she is deployed she starts to have a very different experience um, being transported through this light in that she is not experiencing time in a linear way and the light brigade is the name that is sort of given to these individuals who um, time becomes very confused and there's this sort of theme throughout where she's really trying to ascertain like is she go is this combat madness or is it that she is legitimately like something has this transport system has fundamentally changed her and she responds to it differently to other people um i really enjoyed how that aspect played out throughout this book um it is very brutal it doesn't shy away from showing you like the realities of war both in like the training that they undergo is harsh the missions she's on are intense there's this real look at like this war and the stories they are told what is the reality and propaganda and all of this kind of thing i really enjoyed this on the whole i found it compulsively readable i absolutely whizzed through it and i will say a few reveals i could see coming but i just really enjoyed how you're trying to piece together what is happening sort of in real time alongside deets because you're all in it together it's also a very queer normalized world alongside the brutality um so yeah this was a cool sci-fi that I enjoyed. I also listened to Idol Burning by Rinu Sami, which is a very, very short book. I listened to this because I remember Jen Campbell talking about loving it. Um, I thought it was fine. I think the nature of a very short book, and this is not going to be a groundbreaking thing to say, is that you come away and you're like, hmm, could this have been fleshed out a bit more? Um, it's looking at like idol culture. I didn't say, but it's translated by Aza Yoneda and it is narrated by Mirai. And um, I did find the tone very interesting. The tone reminded me a lot of um, Convenience Store Woman in that we follow this girl who is, um, she's in high school and she has an idol that she absolutely loves and he is accused of punching a fan and then we sort of follow like the repercussions of that and how it affects her um i to be honest with you i thought that that aspect was going to be explored a lot more she very much just like doesn't really care she's like so dedicated to her idol as it goes on why it reminded me of convenience store woman was the way in which she doesn't know how to explain to people that what they are concerned with is just not relevant to her. Like, people think that she's deliberately being difficult or that she blah blah blah, and she's like, it's not being difficult, she's being very genuine. Um, she doesn't view all the situations the same as the people around her do, so she's not being, like, callous or cruel or anything like this, she just genuinely is, like, this is her priority and all that kind of thing. And as it goes on, you really see her um, her separateness from those around her and that in turn reminded me a little bit of Lonely Castle in the Mirror in this look at um, isolation in young people and how that isolation can then manifest like I felt like in this it really manifested with the narrator with this obsession that becomes very internalized I thought that there would be a more commentary on idol culture and all that kind of thing um, which there wasn't really but there was a real look at how um, she completely spirals and loses herself in many ways and that kind of thing so it was interesting and I think it probably is going to be one that I think about it didn't have as much impact as I was reading it I thought it was going to be punchier um and it wasn't but I 
think I, I wonder how I will feel even if you ask me in like a month's time I don't know I'm gonna be thinking about that one um for some poetry um Charlie and Charlie did a poetry readathon at the end of April and I was already reading some poetry so I sort of extra read poetry to like take part in that one of which I'm going to talk about in the next video because it relates to a different book but the two poetries that I did finish in April um towards the start of the month I finished New Songs from a Jade Terrace an anthology of early Chinese love poetry which is translated um by Anne Burrell and this is from it was compiled around the year AD 545 and it is lots and lots of different love poetry from years and years before that. It is a very interesting like collection from that perspective because you sort of move through time so you can kind of see how poetry changed. Um, there is a lot of commonality though even though time passes. Um, my boy Wang Wei is in here which is great, always look out for him. Um, three things that I turn down corners for is that there's this one poem right near the start that has this line that is, I long to be a south streaming sunbeam, I'd race light to see the man I love, which I just really liked. I was like, that fully encapsulates that feeling of like wishing you could change the laws of physics so you could just be with this person sooner. I should have said that that poem is um, A Weaving Wife by Zhao Xi. And um, another one I liked is from In South Park, I Met a Lovely Woman by Ho Su Sheng, which um, has this line. Today I first saw a city destroyer of kingdom destroyers I had long heard. And then it's this description of this woman. And it made me think so much of like women like Helen of Troy and stuff like this. These women who, or this, this way that we build up women to be like their beauty is powerful enough to destroy cities, to ruin lives and all of that. And how so much of that is like projected onto women. Um, and you know like is it like this power but this power that is entirely dependent on like how men respond to women's beauty um so that i also found really interesting my third thing that i really liked about this was that i learned that um mandarin ducks are a symbol of um undying love and commitment because in real life mandarin ducks are so devoted to their mates and i didn't know that and i loved that so that's what because i was like why did mandarin ducks keep cropping up um that was an element to this was i'm positive i missed out on layers of meaning because of not always knowing the associations with things like i did you know with mandarin ducks like i did go away and like Google things and try and find things out, but I'm I'm positive that I miss stuff. Hundred percent sure how good a translation this is because um, I don't read the original language. But um, sometimes reading poems, I was like, hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not always sure that the poeticism was fully translated. Um, I don't know, but that is so hard when you're doing poetry, isn't it? Um, the other poetry collection I finished was The Rattle Bag, edited by Seamus Heaney and Ted Hughes. Um, this is one of the books that I took home when we were help when I was helping to clear out my grand's house after she passed. Um, I loved this. This is now one of my favourite poetry collections, I think. Um, it's edited by Ted Hughes and Seamus Heaney, but the only real like requirements is that they both like the poem and it's arranged alphabetically by poem title so that means that as you go through you're just reading like such a different array of things definitely certain poets crop up a lot it was really funny because as well as knowing which poets i like i don't care for dh lawrence i've discovered because <laughs> every time i'd be reading a poem i'd just be like mm, don't really care i'd get to the end and it'd be like dh lawrence and i was like interesting um, but I don't know if you can see, I turned down the corners of all the poems that I really liked and wanted to return to. And then sometimes I had to turn down the corners at the bottom because I'd already turned down the corner of the one on the previous page. So that is testament to, I've definitely discovered poets that I don't know. Um, there were quite interesting like poets in translation that I'd never heard of who I want to go and explore. Um, on the whole, I found this a really fab collection and I did get really into it during the Poetry Readathon and I sort of just whizzed through it. I thought it was going to take me a lot longer to read this and actually I just got very in the poetry zone. So that was really cool. Um, and then finally for part one, I read two, I have two non-fiction books. 
Um, the first one of those is uh, Divine Might by Natalie Haynes. And excitingly, I went to a talk by Natalie Haynes at Waterstones and she signed my little book for me, which is great. Um, this is uh, her second non-fiction. This one is looking at um, goddesses from Greek mythology. I, I know a fair amount about goddesses. I was like, yeah, sure, I know stuff. Um, I really enjoyed the sort of lenses through which she looked at certain goddesses. Um, I definitely think some of my favourite ones, uh, chapters in this, was um, Hestia, which is looking at, you know, this goddess who is goddess of the home, who is um, one of the lesser sort of spoken about goddesses now but actually would have been such a presence in women's daily life um and that was really an interesting chapter i really liked the hero chapter this sort of like why is this goddess always um demonized and that sort of thing like more than the other goddesses like they're all spiteful vindictive deities why do we pick Hera out and then the one at the end was like the furies and that was so cool because that was sort of looking at the furies and about how the concept of like justice system developed in Athens and in Greece and all this kind of thing and so that was a really fabulous chapter actually I found that super duper illuminating um I really like Natalie Haynes I think that she um, writes in a very accessible way so that if you are not very familiar with like non-fiction writing on these topics I feel like it's really great like entry level as well as if you are coming in with knowledge she's like giving you an interesting angle and take on stuff that there's still something to really like glean from that. Um, and then the final book I want to talk about in this part one wrap up is Botticelli, The Life and Works of Botticelli by Edmund Swinglehurst. We need to take a moment to acknowledge the name Edmund Swinglehurst thank you. Top author name from April. I'm just gonna say it. Um, this is the final one of this little series that I have. I've read a couple of them now and um, it's very much just like an introduction to different artists from history and what it does is it gives you um, big full colour prints and details from paintings and it just takes you through a lot of the artist's life and biographical stuff alongside the painting so it will tell you who the models were how they um who commissioned this like how did this where does this fall in his career and his growth and all that kind of thing so um i really like Botticelli's work but i have never really um known that much about the man very much so this has definitely fleshed out my understanding i think the series is really great i picked these up in the national trust secondhand bookshop and i will be keeping my eyes peeled every time i go to the national trust again um, that's everything for part one. I thought I would try and keep these ones a bit more concise, so um, part two to follow. I would really really love to hear if you have read any of these, what your thoughts are, any feelings, um, what have you been reading in April, do let me know. Otherwise uh, I will call it a day there and I will see you next time for something different.